We have recently been sharing some places we loved visiting as we traveled through San Diego. In this video, we are going to give you a tour and review of the hotel that we stayed in for our week in San Diego. Our hotel was the Hilton San Diego Bayfront. It is located right next door to the San Diego Convention Center and across the San Diego Bay from Coronado Island. It's just across the street from Petco Park, home of the San Diego Padres. There's a bridge going over the street to get you to the park so that you don't have to play in the traffic. It's a block or so down from the famous gas lamp quarter. If you're wondering what any of these places are, they are all covered in our top 10 things to do in San Diego video. We will have a link to that at the end of this video. Here's the lobby. We have interesting steel mesh sculptures hanging from the ceiling in several spots. There's some comfortable seating areas spread around. There's a wall of illuminated panels that changes colors throughout the day. This floor is also the location of the hotel's main restaurant, which we'll look at in a little bit. There's also more than 170,000 square feet of meeting and event spaces that can be rented. Our room was on the 16th floor. When you enter the room, you make an immediate right turn into the bathroom. It was stocked with towels on a shelf under the sink and hand towels and washcloths hanging on the wall. There was a hair dryer in the drawer as usual. This bathroom had a bathtub with shower. Next to the bathroom was the closet. Inside was a luggage rack, an ironing board, an iron, hanging space, and a shelf you could use to store things on. Our luggage was also there because that's where we set it down. Across from the closet is a full-length mirror. Our room had two queen beds with the lamp on each side of the beds. There was a nightstand in between the two beds with a phone as well as an alarm clock with chargers. There was a mini fridge on the floor next to the dresser area. On the countertop next to it was a single serving coffee maker. And under that was a second mini fridge. I don't know why. Both of them were plugged in and working. There was an ice bucket. Each room has 55 inch TVs, except for the executive and presidential suites, which have 65 inch TVs. You pay a lot of money for those larger screens though. There is some drawer space under the TV for you vacation unpackers. There's a desk with another charging station and an office chair so you can get some work done or have somewhere to sit down and eat if you take food up to your room. There's another chair next to that and then our view of the bay outside the window, including a great look at Coronado Island, the shipyard next door, and if you look straight down we had a view of the pool area. It was a nice view, but for some reason I was craving a Dole Whip much of the week when I looked out our window. We are about to talk about the restaurants, the pool, and the prices of this hotel. But first, if you're enjoying this video, please click the thumbs up button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. We post travel videos at least once a week and would love to have you join us as we share our travels with YouTube. We appreciate your support. The lobby level restaurant is called Odyssey. It's a waterfront view bar and lounge. We had dinner there one night. Here is some shaky footage of the menu. You can pause if you'd like to read it.
a lot of the food in San Diego was expensive. We both ordered burgers here, and they were okay. They were a little overly charred on the outside, but they tasted okay. However, we didn't think they were worth the $21 we paid for a burger and fries. My husband would mention here that he doesn't think any burgers are worth more than $15. True. We were not super impressed with this meal. The hotel also had a self-serve frozen yogurt bar at a place called Sweet Things Frozen Yogurt. Jack was relieved to learn they also had Dole Whips. I was relieved to learn there was a Starbucks on site as I had to get up early several mornings for a conference that I was attending next door. There was a food truck on the grounds called On the Rocks, though it was closed when we walked by. There was also a pool club where we ate a couple of meals during the week. Even though they shared the same kitchen, the food we had out here was much better than our meal inside at Odyssey. We ordered chicken quesadillas one night and a pepperoni pizza the next night, along with some drinks, and they were both delicious. The prices were about the same as the indoor restaurant, although it was nice to be out in the wonderful San Diego weather. The hotel has another restaurant opening soon that was under construction during our stay. It's called Hudson and Nash, which has a California road trip theme, and they say they will serve inspired takes on American dishes. Because the food was so expensive, we decided to go cheap whenever possible. We ate at several fast food places that don't have locations near our home. So we enjoyed Earl of Sandwich, which is great. We've had them before at Disney World, Disneyland, and in Las Vegas. We highly recommend their sandwiches. We had our first ever meal at Jack in the Box, and we liked it okay. We visited the very popular, like, drive through line around the building and out into the street type of popular In-N-Out Burger. We'd had them before in Anaheim and in Vegas, and they were good as always. The very bottom floor of the hotel, which is actually one floor down from the lobby floor where you enter, has a seating area with newspapers to read and a TV. This floor is where the new Hudson and Nash restaurant will soon open. The lobby gift shop is also there with San Diego souvenirs, snacks and drinks, over-the-counter medicines, and toiletries. This floor also houses the hotel's spa, if that is your thing. And next door to that is the hotel's fitness center, stocked with more weights and cardio machines than were needed to meet the demand. And then there's an exit to Alice's favorite part of any nice hotel, the pool. It was March when we were there, but we still got in the outdoor pool. The outdoor temperature was around 70 degrees Fahrenheit each day we were there. When we got in the heated pool at about 6 p.m., it felt great. When we got out and started to dry off an hour or so later, we were freezing, though. But we still had a good time. They had a splash pool for the littles. And more importantly, they had two hot tubs for the adults. Another amenity they offer is that they have shuttles to Coronado Island some days of the week. Check with the front desk for the schedule. Our room was priced at $345 a night. There's also a $35 per day mandatory resort fee charged, which provides you with premium Wi-Fi, a daily $15 food and beverage credit, a one-hour bicycle or kayak rental, discount to local attractions, discounts on spa service, and daily bottled water. Plus, self-parking in the connected parking garage is $40 per night, 
You can also valet park for $60 a night. So by the time those charges were added, we were up to about $420 a night. Thankfully, since I was at a work conference, we could expense the nights of the conference and only had to pay for the rest of our stay. There are less expensive hotel options in the area, and there are more expensive options too. This was a really nice hotel though. It was a great home base for a wonderful week in San Diego. Click the links at the end of this video to see our top 10 things to do in San Diego video, or click the other link to see our playlist of all of our San Diego videos so far. A couple more are still on the way. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Please click the subscribe button and notification bell so we'll be sure to see you the next time we're traveling through.